How many guys think I automatically going to implode on every workout I do? What's up, everyone? Happy Thursday. It's Chase Ingram here. I'm Captain America. Not going to do the music. Bill's not here. Bill's had a long day. John Young has a long day. The Savant Podcast has had a long day. And the athletes have had a long day. And I had a long day, but uh, none of that was really workout related. Hello, everyone. 45. Are you guys just all coming here to watch me die? <laughs> on a workout. I thought I'd switch it up this time. Instead of just posting a workout and letting you guys just watch it with no commentary, I'm going to play my whole 24.1 workout with commentary as we watch it together and happy to answer any questions you guys have if you haven't done it already. So uh, yeah, it'll just be me parting with you guys and you'll just get to see some uh, death. <laughs> Uh, I started with 24.1, and for me, I'm just going to do the workouts in the same order as they're written. Uh, personally, for me, I feel like um, easing my way into what they're going to be. If I were to do workout two, yes, we're here to see you showcase your skills. Oh, thanks, Ms. Masters. I appreciate it. Uh, no skills were had. <laughs> But we'll go through it. But yes, I did 24.1. I'll do them in order. I'm going to do 24.2 tomorrow. Uh, Wad Zombie, that wall needs a giant poster of you as Captain America. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Uh, I, I believe I'm still waiting for some other uh, paraphernalia or, or um, I would say logos, graphics. From you, Wad Zombie, because you're so good at it. Um, but you did make me one. Let me see if I can switch this over. <laughs> Let's see. What did you have? Oh, yeah. Should it look something like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I wish I actually had that jawline. Although the hair is pretty on point. Not right now. My hair is right. Or my hair is long. I thought about going hatless today, but I decided not to. Um, but in my, uh, for, for work, for CrossFit, we have, um, we do Zoom meetings. And if I'm ever off, off, uh, off camera, this is my uh, avatar, Wad Zombie. So <laughs> thank you. I'm working on card designs. I don't need to, don't make a card. I don't need, I, I, we are not at card status. Leave that for the, the true athletes. Not the washed up ones, but uh, back to why we're here. I did 24.1 earlier today, four quarterfinals. If you guys haven't done it yet, uh, it's a good one. And oddly enough, I just, I didn't even think about this, but earlier this year, we had the CrossFit for Health Summit, and I helped run a workout with Adrian Bosman at CrossFit Central. And Adrian is like, hey, I've got this idea for a workout. We can do it with a really large group. And I didn't even notice, but it was this workout. So Adrian crowd tested this quarterfinal workout with like, I want to say 60 more, all, near like 70, 75 people. And what we ended up doing is we ended up putting everybody in groups of four. So you had one barbell, one rower, one box with dumbbells. People could kind of pick the weights. We told people to group up with the same strength. So if it's four dudes, like, guys, pick a weight you can all do together. And everyone started at a different station, and we just rotated through for three rounds. Like, this was the exact workout. It was the weights that he wanted. Um, I think he originally had the heights for the box for the men at 24 and 20. So that is the one different thing. And maybe seeing that uh, 24 was a bit much for step-ups with weight. But yeah, Adrian crowd tested this entire quarterfinals workout at the CrossFit for Health Summit. So, you know, in future health summits, guys, if you want to get an inside track of what quarterfinal workouts could be, maybe just uh, show up. But uh, all right, I know you guys aren't here to watch me talk. You're here to watch me suffer. So here, and let's see, where are you? Little workout. Where'd you go? Oh, it's right there. All right, there it is. This is it. Now, I did all my measurements. God, I should work out. I hate, I hate that. I hate watching Taylor, Dallin, Jason, and Colton all work out, and then me post myself <laughs> just sucking. 
Um, all right, so I'm going to go through it. Uh, all my measure, like this, I just clipped this portion of the workout. You guys don't need to see me measure for five minutes and then roll on the floor for five minutes after. So we will go through this um, from the start. Hopefully I don't get a, a ding here. But as you guys have questions, my, my original plan was I wanted to do 10 snatches in the first minute, which is one every six seconds, and that every time... I could be sitting, waiting on the rower at zero. Now, if you guys look at the bottom uh, side here, I actually have, this is the Wadproof app. So I have this connected to this rower. So while I'm rowing, you guys will get to actually see my row pace, um, which is cool here because not only do you get to see the cows I'm rowing, you get to see the cow per hour I'm rowing at and what that 500 meter pace is. And my plan was, the first minute, I'll try to get 10 snatches. I wanted to see what pace I could row fairly aggressively and try to get the most cows there. And then the step-ups were kind of a crapshoot for me because I've been dealing with my right knee. If you guys actually see me, like, shift. Um, my right knee's been bothering me a little bit, so stepping up in warm-ups actually was not happening. And I'm really thankful you didn't have to alternate your step up. So my plan was to just step up with my left foot or left leg the whole time. So, <clears throat> yeah, Mar Mariah Hopper. Um, I'm doing this one tomorrow. Show me what not to do. I will. Oh, thanks, Gerald. Thanks for becoming a member. I appreciate that. Bill and I appreciate that. It really does go a long way. It really does go a long way. Um, so the plan was get snatches in the first round because I'm fresh, 10 snatches, that's, that's no sweat off my, my shoulders. But yeah, I'm, I'm rowing at a 133, 500 meter pace for an entire minute. And I think that was a mistake. <laughs> I think that was a mistake. So I ended up getting, I think, 28 cows because there's no rollover. So I'm at 27. You can see I hit 28 right before the minute hits. And so you only count the 28. Picked up the dumbbells. Now, here was the plan. Only step up on my left leg the whole time. And uh, the rollover is 29. You can't accept the rollover. And I haven't done step-ups in a while, uh, especially with my right knee. But I think I'm about six steps in. And I realize if I just keep going left, like this is not going to, this is not going to work very well. So there's a moment here where I try the right knee. I think right here. Nope. I second guessed myself, so I went left. Oh, here it is. Uh, gah, yeah, that, that hurt a lot. Um, if you see me pitch forward pretty bad, yeah, those did not feel good. And so the step ups weren't bad, honestly. The, the hardest part of the step ups, you can see I lost confidence in my right foot there. Um, it didn't feel good, but I just went with it anyways. I think I got 16 step ups in the first one, and then uh, I would sit down on the rower for 30 seconds and just kind of realize I made a rowing mistake. I don't, I don't recommend rowing 28 cows in the first minute unless you're actually like games level athletes. So I got 10 snatches, 28 cows on the row, and 16 step ups, and that was my first round. Now, after this, I was fully ready to just mail in the snatches and see if I can hold the row pace and the dumbbells. But the problem was my grip on the dumbbells really started to go in the second round, but the row didn't help because I pull pretty hard with my arms, even though it's supposed to be predominantly lower body. And uh, yeah, my grip started to, to go a bit. So going 40 isn't a good strategy, you guys just, no, 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 no. Yeah, 28 cals is a bit too hot. Like I said, it was, uh, the pace I rode for that whole minute was a 133. So here was like, all right, I'm just gonna snatch comfortably. Um, what was kind of nice is that these are actually the best, this is probably the fourth time I've snatched this weight in the last 15 months. So I was actually really happy how it felt. And it got better, because I started trusting getting underneath the bar. And I think I did like one every 10 seconds. I didn't, couldn't see the clock, so. But that was the plan. And what I want to do is stop at 50 seconds no matter what, no matter how many reps I got. And then 
go back to the row. So after the first round, I was fresh for the snatches, so I decided to get at least 10, and that was fine. But the remainder of these three rounds, my focus was not on snatches at all. It was to just be done by 50 seconds, whatever pace I chose to do. I didn't care how many reps I got. And then to see if I could sustain a decent row pace. Because I know I'm an okay rower. Uh, my conditioning isn't really where it should be to keep the pace at which I started at. But again, if you guys are just joining, um, my Wattproof app is connected to the rower. So I go out hot again. You guys can see down here in the bottom left, I'm rowing at a 135 pace at the moment. We're 15 seconds in. And this eventually became like the longest minute of my life. <laughs> but my goal was, if I'm not gonna snatch 10 reps and I'm gonna do six, I could try to see if I can keep that row pace where I know others were sitting around 20 to 21 reps. So I'd rather snatch less reps and get more row cows because it just ticks off a bit quicker. Um, that's dependent on your skill set, though. So I'll tell you guys that if you're trying to game plan for this, if you're strong but not huge, you don't have a good engine, especially on the row, I would say singles on snatches and just see how many reps you get comfortably and then stop at the 50 second mark will be better for you than getting too many, uh, get too intense on your row, right? So where I'm a better rower than I am a barbell cycler, you guys can see I'm taking some breaks here just trying to see if my right leg will cooperate. And it actually ended up getting a little bit better towards the end. And if you guys see this thing when I'm doing step ups, a lot of athletes do this is that use the dumbbell swing and it'll actually pull you up to the box. It'll tax your grip a little bit, but watch. I'll swing the dumbbells where I want to put my foot, okay? And what that does is it'll actually pull you up onto the box. So see exactly where the dumbbells go. Swing them to where you're going to step, step between the dumbbells, and that'll actually get you up on the box uh, a bit quicker. I was also being very intentional on how I step up and extend at the top uh, just because I didn't want to find myself on the back of a cereal box known as a Hiller no rep video, <laughs> especially when I put these out. Lance, um, what is your 1K pace? Should you have dialed it way back like that for the open? Uh, do you mean like my 1K PR pace? Um, my best 1K is a 256.5. So no, I don't recommend rowing at your 1K pace. Honestly, I would say row more at your 2K pace if you can sustain that. But really, I think for, for guys, a decent row pace for a minute and needing to get reps, if you want to row, if you want to get over 20 cows, you have to hold at least 1,400 cows per hour on the rower, which is about a 145 pace. And my, my pace is dramatically going to slow. Uh, on this one, so just wait. Miss Masters, thank you for becoming a member. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. You guys have no idea how, how, uh, how much that helps us do things like this. <clears throat> yes, Lance, 133. Soccer mom, uh, I'm glad you watched this. Um, but yeah, so this is the third round. I have no intention of pushing the snatches because I'm still trying to hold on to the fact that I can roll a uh, row. Cheeky! Cheeky, how's your knee? I know you, um, you did just about everything bad you could do to your knee, and I hope it's getting better. Better. It's good to see you. Yeah, 2K pace, 138. I still think that's fast, though. Right? Like, my best 2K is a 629, I think, or maybe it's a 627, and that's like a 137.5. Um, Augustus, 1,200 cows per hour gets 20 calories. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, 1,400, I guess I'm thinking more of like EMOM. So 1,400, that actually might get you closer to 23 to 24. But I think I row about that here. So every time I get on the rower, I give myself three big pulls where I actually get bigger each time to really kick up the RPMs on the rower and then ride it out the rest of the way. So you guys can see I'm, I'm rowing at about a 1,500 cal uh, sub 140, so yeah, that's about right what I thought, is 1,500 is about 140, 1,400 is about 145. So if you guys aren't as good as pacing out cows per hour um, because you're used to meters, that's 
the, the easy conversion. 1,500 is about a 140. 1,400 is about a 145. Uh, 1,200, I think, is about, it's closer to two minutes. Um, but again, play to your strengths. Yeah, you can see that, 1,400. And I can't remember how many calls I got on this one. This is when I was really starting to feel sorry for myself. And that will show massively in this third set of dumbbell step-ups. The thing about this, yeah, I got 23 cows. That's what I thought. Um, I was trying to get my hands on the dumbbell as quick as I could, but I didn't stand up as soon as I should. And there's a point here where the dam breaks, and I believe I put the dumbbells down. <laughs> Let's see, Augustus. Chase, have you ever done a max cal per hour test just to see what you peek out on the rower? Uh, not a test, but I think the most I've ever seen cows per hour on the rower when I'm rowing for, I think I did, uh, yep, this is where I put them down. God, what a bitch. I'm so mad that I did that. This is it. This is where I got to learn to get the intensity back. It's been a while since I've been intense. Uh, 2,800 is probably the most I've put up there, Augustus, uh, in a workout. But that was, that was ending on a row. Like, I think it was... 50 cows at the end of a, or no, 30 cows at the end of a workout. And it's just like a full send. All right, one round left to go. That's not, oh, because I said, oh, because I put him down. I know, yeah. Apparently I cannot do this all day. You're right, Vindicate. You're right. Um, but yeah, I guess I've never just seen how, how, um, high I could get the, but I, I'm pretty sure that's about the most I could do. <laughs> um, all right, going to the last round, I was uh, pretty fatigued. I only wanted to do five snatches. I'd done six the previous two. I did 10 to start. And that was the hopes that I could push the row again, but spoiler alert, I did not <laughs> push the row again. And then just hang on to the dumbbells at the end. If I were to do this again, which I'm not going to do this again, I think, um, I think not rowing 1,800 cal per hour, which, or, or the first two rounds rowing a sub 135, I probably would not do that. I think sitting at 1,500 is just fine for the minute because that's a 140 pace and I'm still getting close to 25 cals. Per minute, and so that's what I would have done. I wouldn't change anything on the snatches, just because I'm just not there yet. And if I push the snatches more, I'm going to row worse. Um, I definitely would. Now that I've done the step ups, and my right knee actually felt the best on the last round, I would push those a bit harder because I didn't row as fast. But then you're just you're just swapping reps. You know, I went 28 cals in the first minute. I think 25 and then 23. I think it, maybe I get 20 on this one. But again, if you guys are just starting, like my row's connected to the, the Wadproof app, so you can see how fast I am not rowing on this fourth and final round. Did any, let's see, David Arsenault, did any movement affect the other more than breathing? No. I would say the only thing was the legs on the row going into the step ups. Would I wear knee sleeves on the redo, Augustus? No, because I don't, I don't like when I'm doing a lot of high volume leg work and then I have that constriction across my knee. And it's not necessarily a knee sleeve that's gonna fix the situation. I, I'm really not sure what it is just yet, but I'm in, the, I'm in the, the first stage of denial that I actually have a serious problem. Um, but uh, yeah, Lance, you're right. You gotta figure out your strong movement and maximize those reps, but without a detriment to the other. So you guys see is, look, like I'm rowing under a 1,400 cal per hour pace, and that's a sub 145. So honestly, if I go back, I'll probably just try to sit at 1,400, maybe 1,500 cals per hour, get about 24. Yeah, so 22 cals on that one. I'm not sure where the minute was. Maybe it's 21. And this is where I just really felt sorry for myself. I'm 15 seconds in, and I haven't done shit, so... But once I picked him up, I was like, okay, I got to make do. So my, my worst round of step-ups was actually the last round where I took a break and I got 13. Um, I started 15 seconds late here. And 
try to push the pace a little bit. So again, trying to swing the dumbbells up. Right knee was cooperating towards the end, so that actually gave me a little bit more confidence to step up quick. You guys can see as I'm stepping up straight up versus really leaning forward. And I almost fell off the box the first time I put my right foot on there because I, I jumped so far away from my knee. So 10 seconds, let's make sure I don't do anything past the minute mark. Three. Yep, that's about right. And that's it. I got work to do. I'm going to do 24.2 tomorrow, which I'm not looking forward to. And uh, yeah. So I think the total number of reps I got was 185. I think I'm, I, uh, I could do 200. I think 200's in me. I just, you know. Uh, Lance, you think about competing versus someone to give you extra push? Yes, I do. In fact, I, I think about less me competing against individuals, but to give myself an extra push at the end of a workout, I often think of myself as being, so I swam in college, so I usually think relay and team is that if I'm the last person to go on the workout and I have three people depending on me, that's usually where I try to put myself at the end. And so I'm, I'm worried less about letting myself down and I'm worried more about letting my teammates down. Uh, Justin, he actually, it feels good. Actually feels better than, this, than it did before the workout. So maybe that's it. Jenna or Joanna Love, KT Tape fixed my knee and now it's stronger, works like a charm. Eh, I'll try it. I'll try it, but yeah, that's it, gang. That's the workout. Now, tips, tricks, ideas is a lot like what Bill and I were talking about. Thank you guys for watching that. Is pick what you're best at and center everything around that. Don't isolate that as your one true focus. Let me get my like tired body off of this. <laughs> okay. Is uh, focus less uh, on the things that you're bad at and maximize the things that you're good at. So for example, um, you guys saw uh, who was judging me is my training partner, Jules. Thank you guys. Uh, she can move a barbell very well. And when it's 85, it's even better. She also has like really strong grip. So the 35 pound dumbbells in that position, that actually, the, if you guys haven't done this yet, like your grip fatigue is going to surprise you uh, how much that's going to come into play. So she was good at both of those. And so the one thing that would take away from her, her event would be if she rode too hard. And so I actually had her do 10 snatches each round, right? Where I was doing five to six where she didn't need to make that up on the row, but she was beating me on about four to five reps on the step-ups too. So a little good, a little back and forth. Don't worry, Judy, you can go back and watch it. It's not, it's not, you can go back and watch it. It's, it you're not missing anything, if we're being honest. <laughs> but I would just pick on what you guys are uh, good at and center your, your focus around that. So if you're good with the barbell, don't, do touch and go on the bar, but just make sure that you can get a lot of reps easily and then row at a decent pace and then hit your step ups. If you're great on the rower, you don't need to row as fast as I started with, but you do want to make sure is that you maximize your total four rounds, not just the two rounds like I did. Obviously, my back half, you know, I did 20 eight cals in the first round, but only 21 or 22 on the last round. All right, so that's a six cal difference where maybe if I just did 25 each time, I actually would have got more reps in total and been a bit more fresh on the box step ups where the most I was getting was 16, but I was watching athletes get upwards to 18 to 20. So there's a give and take there and doing that adds up, right? Getting that one extra rep at the end of your box step ups is totally worth it. So when you guys are in the later rounds, even in the first round, if you're on any minute on the row, right, like row at zero and row to 60, maximize your time there. If you're close, try to get that cal. Obviously, there's no rollover on the cows for this workout. It was in the open for meters. But it's worth getting the extra rep when you have an opportunity to get the extra rep. And uh, <laughs> I just saw Daniel's question. Um, it's worth getting the extra rep when you have it in front of you. 
Do not put the dumbbells down when you have three seconds left and you might be able to get that rep because what you don't wanna do is try to make that rep up later in the workout. When you're in the fourth round on the rower and you realize you left maybe a snatch off the table, that extra cal in the fourth round is a really tough cal to get back. Or the step ups, if you row too slow and now you're gonna have to make up two reps that you could have gotten when you were rowing but you decided not to on the step ups, like. There, just don't leave cows on the table or reps on the table that you could have got. Daniel, where can someone make up 85 more reps to get John Young's prediction 270? Nobody's getting 270. We said that last night. I like how John is, um, very, has a lot of high praise for games athletes, as do I, but uh, that one is going to be rough. I still think 240 is going to be the magic number. 60, 60 reps around. Sit so, to get like to put in perspective to get 240 snap like that's an average of 20 reps per on the step ups that's about as many as you can get without blurring the lines of extension at the top or or shorting things up 20 is about max there maybe maybe 22 maybe on snatches, if you're doing 20 in those 60 seconds, like that is, you, are, you have put yourself in a very poor place. I even think 15 is pushing it. But say it's 15. So we got 15 snatches, 20 on the box step ups. That's 35. You're gonna have to row 25 on the, on the rower, and you're gonna have to do that four times in a row, and that still only gets you 240. I, I, Someone will do it. These guys are freaks. John's right. But no one's getting 270. <laughs> no one's getting 270. All right, gang. God, there's 176 of you guys. You guys are crazy. I hope you like that. I'll, uh, I'll do the same thing. If you guys dug it, let me know in the comments if you like this more than just me posting the, uh, the video with no commentary on how it went. So tomorrow I'll be taking on 24-2, so the wall balls and the burpee box ship overs, uh, also known as just the burpee box ship overs. Um, that's going to, that's going to be rough, but thank you guys for, uh, rolling with me. Thanks for the questions. I hope this helped you guys see some, someone a bit more, um, human <laughs> to take this on and good luck to everybody out there. If you guys have questions on pacing strategy, throw something in the comments. We'll try to answer that best we can. Uh, Travis, there was no other good content today, Chase. We needed our fix. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Uh, what the Savon podcast did uh, all day today. Um, Savon podcast, Taylor versus the world tomorrow. They'll be back in action. I believe Taylor is unofficially um, in the lead right now. I think it's four to five to five to six if they are using the points per place scoring system. Uh, what would have been wild is that if Taylor didn't, uh, uh, spoiler alert, if anybody hasn't watched, um, spoiler alert, just letting you know, if you haven't watched, stop Stop. Don't leave. Just hit mute. I, I would love you guys to stick around. It's great for the algorithm. Um, but if Taylor didn't beat Jason in the last one by, I think it was 18 seconds, then they all would be tied at five because of that swap, which is pretty wild. Uh, but tomorrow you've got Fisa Gaffey and uh, Lindsay. Gosh, what's her name? I'm sorry. Lindsay. What is it? Lindsay Lane. That's right. It's like a superhero name. I should know that. Lindsay Lane. They're starting things off. They're doing workout three and workout four tomorrow. I believe they are doing the, well, I think they have to. Actually, I think they're going to do the interval one first. I believe that's the case. I think they're going to go 24.1 and 24.2 tomorrow. So that all kicks off tomorrow at 8.15 Central. 945, 9. All right, so they got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so Friday, they've got two, and then Saturday, they are finishing up with two. So of a lot of action. That was awesome. Awesome stuff today. Um, what they're, the production that they're doing over there, that whole team is just insane. And uh, I hope they understand how important that is to the community watching because. Um, I mean, I'm just a fan right now, sitting on the sidelines, and I appreciate the hell out of it. What, the, what that whole crew is doing is, is fantastic, and it's uh, something that should be celebrated and supported, so I hope you guys are watching that because it was awesome. So thank you guys for joining me. 
And uh, wish you all luck in your quarterfinals. And thank you, Kurt. And I will be back, I guess, tomorrow with uh, how 2020